Hi everyone, this is Charlie Comiskey from Lights on Waverly. And today I'm going to talk about the newest X model for Firework Stars. It's based on the 26 point porcupine and supports up to 650 individually addressable lights. You can find this X model at the URL at the bottom of the screen. It is named 2x12SL. So as I mentioned earlier, it's based on 26 points of light and is ideal for a higher density firework star with up to 650 individually addressable lights across the spokes. It is ideal for sea lights. It was actually designed for sea light strings. And because it's based on the porcupine star, it supports either off the shelf type of builds, or if you download the 3D printed parts from Colts.3D, you can use those as well. What makes this a little unique from the others is this one is wired for straight strings of lights. So you'll have the ability to take a longer string of light and go up and then back down the spoke and then go over and over for additional spokes with one strand of lights. The way it works is you have 12 lights going up the spoke with the 12th light being the tip. You go down 11 more lights and then between each of the spokes you have two lights and that provides just enough wire for you to be able to have multiple spokes along the same string of lights. The, this X model is based on a version three schema. This is a little more advanced than the version one and version two schematics that have been shared previously for some of the other firework stars. What makes this schema different is I've added some additional submodels. There is depth added to many of the existing submodels. So when you run the effects, you can do some additional interesting render capabilities with them that you weren't able to do before. I took a number of the existing model groups and migrated them to become submodels themselves. And you can see an example of this here with the burst front GRP. I took each of the old submodels and layered them together into one bigger submodel. And it just makes it a lot easier to be able to program within your sequences. At the same time, I've also added several new model groups that are really groupings of submodels that will be beneficial for if you want to do ring effects or burst effects or other types of special effects. Also with this X model, it supports effect pre presets. So nine different presets have been included with this most recent X model. The presets are based on pyrotechnic equivalent of different types of firework, of different firework blasts. One, for example, is the chrysanthemum, there's a ring, there's a peony. I also added the fireball, which is similar to the gas bomb effect that is popular now with some of the pyrotechnic shows that are out there. Additionally, there's a concept of an add-on effect. An add-on effect is basically a much more complex preset. The effect may require several different submodels to have various effects closely sequenced together to be able to produce the right desired firework blast. An example of this is the jellyfish, and I've included the URL here to find the jellyfish add-on effect, and if others are added in the future, they will be loaded to that same location. With that, let's take a moment or two and see a demo of some of these effects in action. Here we are in the XLights program, and I have loaded the demo sequence file for the Fireworks Star. I've simplified the screen, the bottom part, we can see the sequence track. I've added labels to help describe what's going on throughout the sequence. I highly recommend creating a track yourself when it comes time to sequencing, and you can put in your own comments as to what kind of firework effect you're looking to use. <clears throat> in the upper left-hand corner, we've got the house preview, so we can see how things would render within the XLights program, and then in the right hand side, we have got a video overlay of the actual firework star itself so you can see what it looks like live with the various effects. For purposes of this video, I have slowed things down to play at three quarter speed so I can talk almost as fast as some of these effects are displaying on the screen. 
And with that, let's go on and we will get started with us. So the first set of effects here are some of the new presets that are provided with the version three of the Fireworks Star. Where possible, what I did was I tried to mimic and name the preset and the effect to the pyrotechnic equivalent. So we've got the peony, the chrysanthemum. We've got a couple examples of some rings, got a pinwheel, good old fashioned sparkler, and, and of course blanks. And then you know one of my favorites is the fireball. So we'll have a look at those first. We'll start with the peony. It's just a quick burst of light. The chrysanthemum is similar, but it's a longer tail of light. We've got a ring effect because, well, everybody knows what a ring effect is. This is neat when you can have multiple ring effects firing off next to each other. This is the pinwheel that's running against the whole spiral group. This is the same pinwheel effect using it against a, a rose effect. So you can see how it looks different. We've got the sparkler. It's probably one that could be tuned a little bit, but it gives the effect of a, what a real sparkler would be. A ring cross is just two different rings uh, that are perpendicular from each other. Firework shows always have some blanks. And then my favorite is the fireball. It's similar to the gas bombs that are pretty popular nowadays with some of the firework shows that you actually see. And so that's an example of the nine different presets that are now loaded with the version three of the X model. Our next area is going to be the burst effects. And let me scroll all the way up here. There's a lot of submodels here. So the burst effects, I put appropriate ones that are good for firework effects, different types of bursts. I group them all together into one common model group called the burst effects. And assuming the star is appropriately positioned and calibrated using the XYZ sequence, you'll have either, um, oh, well, we'll stop that here for a moment. We'll come on over here to the burst effects and we'll start that again from there. The bursts will start from the right. We got a quick burst like that. And then we move to the front. Basically what this is doing is for each one of the quadrants of the, the, the firework star, it is sending off a burst. So when you're creating your, your own firework sequences, you can kind of do directional blasts. And of course, you know, there may also be a localized one that goes to the top. So you have the burst top, there's burst half up. This is similar to what used to be known as the full, and it's the top half. And then there is the whole spiral, which allows you to create a burst across the whole star. So with that, then, we will move to the various kinds of ring effects. So this model group is loaded with a number of submodels that are really good at creating various kinds of rings. And when we come on over here to the various ring effects, we will get started here. We're going to start off with a number of vertical rings. And the porcupine star can be divided into or sliced into four different types of or four different vertical rings. So we have them there. Uh, it can also be sliced at a 45 degree angle. There's actually eight different ring positions that could be done with the with those. And so you've got a number of capabilities with with that one. And then there's also a vertical plane. In this case, it is plane number three. And you can adjust the chase size to be able to adjust the length of it. What's also neat with this is you can put in some pinwheel type of effects with the rings to be able to get some other cool effects from it. The next set is called compass effects. And these are directional effects that you can use with a star, it makes it easier to be able to connect one star to another star, or maybe your firework star to a prop on the ground or someplace else. Instead of knowing exactly which spoke number it is, assuming the star is configured uh, to, to where the north is pointed towards the, 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 the back of, of the display, uh, you have the ability to just pick a compass point and say, I want to fire off a spoke that is going to the west. And you pick the right one, and it'll go off to the west. 
And so in this particular case, we'll expand the compass effects. And for this demo example, I've got one that is pointing north. So that'll point to the back. Then we have something south, which is going to point to the front. And then we've got something set up for the east. And then I think we've got something for the south or for the west. And then if you wanted to fire something off, you know, towards the ground, you might do something from the southwest minus, which would be a spoke that's in the southwest position, but aiming downward towards a particular item. So we'll go on and we'll kick off the compass effects from the proper location. And here we go. We can see where things are going north. We can see where they're now going south, east, and then west. And we can see it, different ones for different directions. And so with that, we will next move to the special effects. These are effects that allow you to do neat looking things with the Firework Star. Admittedly, they are not really firework like, but oftentimes you just want the star to do cool things to the music and to the sequences that you are working with. And so I grouped together a number of submodels that are uh, at core to providing some really nice special effects. These are the ones that I default to the most for some of my sequences. I might take a mega tree uh, track and put it against the rows or against the whole spiral uh, or maybe against the, 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 the ribs. Uh, these are some of the key ones that if you're looking to just make the prop look cool, these are very good ones to, to be able to go on and use. And so with that, we're going to get started here. We will see what the rose effect looks like. And this is just not cooperating with me too much. We'll start it again here from the rose effect. We can see in this case where the light is expanding. You can do some really interesting effects. We got custom rows. I think I picked one, four, and seven. So you can select them. Uh, you can use the pinwheel effect and get kind of a, a hypno or a spiral type of look. Uh, we've got the various spinners. So as I said earlier, there's four different spinner planes and you can do some neat stuff with each of them. This one here does a really nice job of showing the four different spinner planes. Uh, and then using the ring effect, you can go on and, and make it blast in all sorts of different directions like that. If you apply the pinwheel effect, you get that kind of hypno type of look, and you can do that by each of the, the individual planes. And then the spinner reverse, which I don't think is firing off right now, would make everything go the opposite direction. So what's interesting here, we're going to pause this for a moment. So we've got the rib tilts. A rib is one side of the sphere uh, or of the hub. And uh, in this particular case, it is a 45 degree. It's a tilted angle. Uh, what I like about this is if you use the bars effect, with that one effect against, in this case, the rib tilts group. So this is the group of all of the different ones. Using the bars effect, you can basically get a 360 degree rotation of activity. So I've done this here using the bars effect with first with the rib tilts, and then we'll see it with the planes, and we'll see a couple others. So we will get this started up again, and it's not going to start where I wanted. We'll come back over here to the rib tilts and we will start watching it from there again. So using one bars effect, it allows you to cover all the different submodels that are programmed into the planes group or ribs group or rows group or the spinners group in this particular case. Uh, so the, the bars effect is pretty neat. What I like about this one here is this is a firework effect. It's a great way of being able to maybe add a little bit of sparkle to a firework that that you've created and are using within your within your firework shop. So with that, then we're going to move here to uh, some other special effects. Uh, these are examples. They are more artsy. They are not ones that I'm anticipating that you're going to use that much, but I encourage you to take a look at them. Uh, they are different types of spinners that start very localized at the top 
with a wibble, and then they begin to grow and expand to a point where they eventually are a 45 degree angle or a tilt. And then they have their focus for the bottom part of the star, and it all concludes with wobbles. Uh, they're unique names, but I was looking for something that kind of reciprocated its each each other from the top to the bottom as to as to how they would work and how they would look. So if we come here and we're going to start from the wibbles, uh, we'll see with the wibbles here, there are just a couple of smokes up at the very top. The tips, it's a little bit bigger. When you get to tipples, you can really begin to see where it begins to open up the tilts. It's it's a half size, and then you begin to shrink on down with the topples, the tumbles, and then the wobbles. Finally, there's a set of planes, and it just fires off the various planes that are there uh, within the or available within your hub. Uh, this final one here. Uh, it was one I kind of put together at the very end. It was kind of cool. It's like a, a police effect where you get the red and the blue spinning around. And then the final one here is just a sh very short example of a firework. What we'll do is we will I did the wrong direction on that one here. We'll go as it's largely in a, a set of various burst effects that took place. So we'll get things going here. We will hit start. We'll see the rocket fire off, it explodes, top half, it sparkles, and then it kind of conclude, concludes with a set of planes collapsing down on itself. So I hope this demo and the discussion was useful. I will remind folks to take a look at and read the labels. Uh, some of these, I have more notes than what you can see for how far I've expanded, but you can go on and expand them. Use this, use the instructables.pdf to kind of follow along and see and have a better understanding of the different types of effects. Thank you for watching. I have added URLs to some of the more commonly downloadable items here, whether it be for the X model or the add-on effects. Also added the URL if you want to download the 3D printed parts for an enhanced experience. You can find this video as well as many others on my YouTube channel, Lights on Waverly. And when you're there, please remember to subscribe. Thank you.